Following its first season, the hype for Centaur World Season 2 was huge. But now that the story appears to be completed, one begins to notice the many flaws and blatantly unanswered questions remaining. In this video, we are discussing what went wrong. And stick around until the end of the video to find out whether these inconsistencies actually hint at the show's renewal. One of, if not the biggest letdown, was the character of the woman. In season 1's finale, the Nowhere King said she made him that way, making it seem like she really actively did something to him. But girl literally didn't even do anything. She was not at fault for anything that happened to the Elktor. It was the Elktor's idea to split himself up, and she can't be blamed for the general's actions either. So while she wasn't even responsible for creating the Nowhere King, she as a personality had next to no relevance to the Nowhere King's origin and the overall story. All the efforts to build up the mystery surrounding her in season 1 were burned to ashes when she was reduced to a mere love interest. The only character traits of hers that were essential are that she's nice and pretty and pretty nice. Thus ultimately, her contribution to the current events was minimal and not even necessary. You want me to believe she was just chilling on her sofa after the rift opened only to turn up for like 5 minutes, stealing the spotlight to kill the general? Which by the way doesn't make any sense either. In season 1 she did not have the heart to stab a monster that killed hundreds of people because she felt bad about something she had not even caused. However in season 2 she somehow didn't need to think twice about yeeting her former husband off a cliff and executing the original Elktor that she only knew as a humble portal mechanic before. Like I know where this is coming coming from. Since the Nowhere King factually escaped following the season 1 finale and then, upon returning to the battlefield in season 2 to witness the pain and suffering these two have caused, the woman was able to put the greater good above her own feelings. Unfortunately, this development occurred off screen, thus became as subtle and intangible as can be. It wouldn't have hurt to add another episode somewhere in season 2 that would have fully fleshed out the woman's character and her purpose in the story. A reason for the lack of focus on the woman was probably time. I'm not sure whether it was a creative decision to complete the story in two seasons or if Netflix ordered the show to end. One way or another, a three-part project may have been more appropriate. The show could have used some additional time to go in-depth on some characters, to include a few more arcs like the battle boot camp or a long-term battle, and to expand the centaur world lore. Concerning the lore, the aspect that bothers me the most is that no one ever even explained what shamans are, and generally, of how little importance they were in the greater picture. In season 1, they serve the purpose of being keepers of the key pieces, which is fine, but no info on why and how they were given the pieces. In season 2, when a literal war broke loose, the most powerful centaurs didn't do squat. That just doesn't sit right ride with me. Moreover, what can they even do? They each had like a few fancy spells, which by the way all centaurs have. So what's special about them? And to top things off, Horse became a shaman. Horse was chosen to become a shaman over Warmerwink, who underwent shaman training. Horse was chosen despite knowing only two spells, one of which is a talking tail. Who decided on this? No like for real, who even appoints shamans? You see. The whole shaman concept could have been super cool, it just wasn't carried out properly. In a similar way, the minotaur concept appears to be even less thought out. Minotaurs are combinations of a sentient being like a human or a centaur and an animal, and it was clearly depicted that minotaurs can in fact retain parts of their initial personalities. Hence, being made from non-evil beings, it makes perfect sense that they aren't purely evil at heart. As as proven at the very end and by Stabby's prime example. Why then did the Minotaurs serve the Nowhere King? The ending of season 2 proved that they don't have a violent nature. Especially when the Nowhere King was trapped in the rift, why did they continue to terrorize humans? We know for a fact 
fact that they weren't just defending themselves against the general's attacks. Because season 1 episode 1 featured the Minotaurs wreaking havoc of their own accord. You could argue that the Nowhere King was controlling them based on the fact that they stopped moving too when the Nowhere King was struck by backstory magic. But if that was the case, as just mentioned, they wouldn't have resorted to evil while he was gone. The season 2 finale made it pretty clear that horses and the Nowhere King's parts in the story are over. But even if the main story has come to an end, prequels and spin-offs can always be produced. Besides some other possibilities, these could be used to explore the story of the woman in more detail. A yet deeper dive into the herd's backstories, including more infos on the shamans, would also be interesting. Even if none of this comes to be, and our questions are never answered, we love Centaur World anyway.